Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Arteta building the future at Arsenal. Of course, if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button. Check out SofaScore, banging football app we use for all of our analysis. But anyway, let's get this party started. Let's talk about Arsenal and kind of what they're doing. Because I've been really, really impressed by what Arsenal did in the summer. You know, as much as it was a criticised window, um, I think Arsenal made some good signings. And I think we're starting to see that this season in the Premier League. Arsenal are building for the future. And I think that's very, very important to consider. Uh, one of the things that we, we saw from the signings in the summer was a focus on youth development and a focus on signing young players to build a team for the future. And I think three of the big signings over the summer for me who've ex excelled, Aaron Ramsdale in, in between the sticks, superb performances. Uh, Nuno uh, Tavares has been really good at left back, you know, deputising when Kieran Tierney's not been fit. Benjamin White and obviously Tommy Yasu been the th sort of the four best signings for me. Uh, Lekonga's come into midfield and played well in certain games, still adjusting to the league. Obviously Odegaard's doing a similar thing as well. But I think first and foremost is that defensive solidity that Arsenal are creating uh, from these young players. And Ben White, I think long term is a cracking signing, even though it's a lot of money. But looking at Arsenal, I think one of the big things that we've got to kind of have a look at first is the youthfulness of the squad. And, you know, you take Arsenal as, as a football club, you know, we kind of, from, from me growing up, Arsenal were always super dominant with Manchester United. Uh, but obviously with the new stadium, the lack of financial strength versus some of the, the nouveau rich clubs in the league, Arsenal have got to take a slightly deeper approach. And when we look at the youngest starting 11s in the Premier League this season, Arsenal have nine out of the 10 youngest 11s. And I think that is a big, big thing for Mikel Arteta's side in terms of the long-term development of these players, the coaching of these these players to become the next generation for Arsenal. Arsenal aren't playing for the Premier League right now. Arsenal are playing for a Premier League title challenge, let's say in, in two to three to four years. And I think that is a really good structure for a football club. It's obviously bold. You've got to back the manager for a long time. But at the same time, I think that is a, uh, you know, a good thing. And when we look at the average starting uh, age is of the average starting 11 in the Premier League, Arsenal, once again, uh, top it out with their average age of their squad, uh, of their starting 11, sorry, at 24.2. Um, and I think that is super impressive when you consider what they, you know, when they can go, you know, you look at Liverpool's squad, um, Liverpool's squad and, and Man United's squad, uh, 27 and 26.8. Man City's is 26.8. Chelsea's is 26.7. So we're talking this Arsenal squad as another two years of development before you need to consider it with being competitive with these sides. And I don't think that necessarily is a bad thing. I think Arsenal, when you look at what they've done over the last few games and how they've, you know, tactically been set up, I do like what they're doing. I like what Mikel Arteta is trying to instill into the team and instill in terms of values. Obviously, the standout performance for Arsenal this season was against Tottenham, that 3-1 win. Uh, and the two youngsters, Bakayo Saka, providing supreme threat down the right-hand side with his creativity, but also goal scoring. And Smith Rowe, similar thing, where he's providing that last kind of pass, that last run in behind, but also carrying the ball really well for Arsenal Football Club. And I think the setup for Arsenal works out. Um, you know, frequent recently we've seen the kind of old guard up front uh, with Lacazette and Thomas Partey, um, with the youngsters kind of playing in behind, with Saka on the right-hand side being the creative hub and Smith Rowe on that left-hand side. I kind of like the build-up and the setup. Also, Nuno Tavares has provided some good quality going forward. We just have a look at what they've been what they've been working on and what they've been developing. Uh, very much at the moment is a kind of 4-2-3-1 for Arsenal. Uh, we have seen a 4-3-3 at times as well, and I'd like to see the development of that under Mikel Arteta. But it is this this quality um, with looking forward and kind of the roles that the youngsters will play going forward. Obviously, Bakayo Saka um, has made a career out of playing wide left as a left wing back, but also on the right-hand side. And I think he's best at the moment playing as this inverted winger on the right, being the creative hub for Arsenal. Uh, on the other flank, obviously, with Smith Rowe, it is kind of that carry in the final third, all that work rate. I think Smith Rowe, one of the best things I like about Smith Rowe is his timing to get into the penalty area and finish off moves. I think that is one of the best things of his skill set is making that right move at the right time and then being composed with his finishing. Um, I think this setup for Arsenal can take them far. I think you're probably looking in the next few windows of maybe buying in a new centre forward when Aubameyang finally moves on from Arsenal. 
maybe getting a uh, a number a number nine that can play as a number ten in a sense, kind of that second striker role. But also in terms of development, obviously we know we're looking at the what happens when Odegaard comes in. You know, we've seen the three mid the three man midfield at times with uh, Nicolas Pepe coming into the eleven uh, and Saka, in fact, moving to that left wing. Pepe playing on the right and Smith Rowe playing in midfield with Odegaard, kind of split into that six. Uh, eight, ten model of midfield. Uh, they've tried it at times. They've, they've, it worked really well against Crystal Palace in the first twenty minutes of the game. Arsenal were rampant; they were dominant. But it's still a work in progress. I think that set up for Arsenal from a possession perspective as well. We mentioned previously how how good Arsenal have been in the in an attacking sense um, with the ball at their feet. You know, with a with a Laconga playing a Saka being back out to the wide right with Smith Rowe playing kind of inside um, Lakonga party providing that base uh, a back three of Gabriel Tomiyasu and Ben White and then the left wing back playing very very attacking uh, and Tavares has been very very impressive in that role for me he carries quite well carries inside quite nicely carries on the outside quite nicely gets good quality into the box but this for me is a is a good attacking structure and I think that's kind of the side of why what things that I like about Arsenal right now is you look at the structure and it is very, very structured. You know, there is a defined unit of defence, there's a defined unit and attack in possession. There is rotation, don't get me wrong. And we've seen at times, you know, the likes of Tommy Yasu playing in, in an inside position, you know, as well as playing on a, as an outside position, uh, especially when they play that three-man midfield we previously spoke about uh, with... You know, Odegaard in there, um, Smith Rowe and, and you know, the likes of Saka wide, uh, you know, and Pepe in there. I think there's loads of different combinations with Arteta's Arsenal and that's why I like it. You know, we, we're talking kind of creating that box in midfield for Arteta's Arsenal. And that That is impressive for me. That is really impressive. But not only that, the back sort of three players that are they're so crucial to Arsenal moving forward. Ramsdale's ability on the ball, massively underrated. Hit some really nice passes in their build-up shape into midfield. And I think he's underrated with the ball at his feet. And also saves-wise, fantastic. Made eight saves in the game against Leicester City. The most made in a single game this season. Fantastic save from the Madison free kick. And that back line, that kind of core of Arsenal's team, the two centre-halves, same age demographic, same quality. Gabriel's a very good footballer as well. Dominant in, in from a defensive sense, but has a vision to play the balls in behind the defence. Uh, ben White's got the quality in carrying. I just think the blend of Arsenal's squad right now is absolutely spot on. And Mikel Arteta deserves a lot of credit for building this young team and now getting the best out of it. Uh, Smith Rowe and Saka are obviously the stars of this team and they will be the stars of Arsenal come, you know, for years to come. Uh, Smith Rowe, in terms of uh, progression, is only behind some maximum and Declan Rice in terms of carries into the final third. We know that Saka's got the quality in there. Um, I think there's, you know, a good squad building at Arsenal under a, a, a good manager. I still believe Arteta is a very, has got the potential to be a very, very good manager. Knows a lot of different, you know, methodology that Pep Guardiola's obviously had at Man City. And I think that is a huge, huge thing in the modern days, understanding that. Um, and there's a number of things that you can recognise in in Arteta's style and tactics and Guardiola's tactics. And that, Arsenal fans, is a good thing. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Are you happy with the rebuilding job Arteta is doing at Arsenal? Check out SofaScore. I've been Statman Dave. We'll see you later.